A reading from the first book of Kings. Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of the whole community of Israel and stretching forth his hands toward heaven. He said, Lord, God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven above or on earth below. You keep your covenant of mercy with your servants who are faithful to you with their whole heart. Can it indeed be that God dwells on earth? If the heavens and the highest heavens cannot contain you, how much less this temple which I have built. Look kindly on the prayer and petition of your servant, O Lord, my God, and listen to the cry of supplication which I, your servant, utter before you this day. May your eyes watch night and day over this temple, the place where you have decreed you shall be honored. May you heed the prayer which I, your servant, offer in this place. Listen to the petitions of your servant and of your people Israel, which they offer in this place. Listen from your heavenly dwelling and grand pardon. The word of the Lord. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord mighty God. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord mighty God. My soul yearns and pines for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord mighty God. Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest, in which she puts her young. Your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord mighty God. Bless they who dwell in your house. Continually they praise you. O God, behold our shield and look upon the face of your anointed. How lovely, How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord mighty God. I had rather one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I had rather lie at the threshold of the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. How lovely, How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord mighty God. Dominus Vobiscus, et tu Lexio Sancti Evangelii secundum Marcu. When the Pharisees, with some scribes who had come from Jerusalem, gathered around Jesus, they observed that some of his disciples ate their meals with unclean, that is, unwashed hands. For the Pharisees, and in fact all Jews, do not eat without carefully washing their hands, keeping the tradition of the elders. And on coming from the marketplace, they do not eat without purifying themselves. And there are many other things that they have traditionally observed, the purification of cups and jugs and kettles and beds. So the Pharisees and scribes questioned him, 
Why do your disciples not follow the tradition of the elders, but instead eat a meal with unclean hands? He responded, Well did Isaiah prophesy about you hypocrites. As it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines human precepts. You disregard God's commandment, but cling to human tradition. He went on to say, How well you have set aside the commandment of God in order to hold, uphold your tradition. For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother, and whoever curses father or mother shall die. Yet you say, If anyone says to father or mother, Any support you might have had from me is korban, meaning dedicated to God, you allow him to do nothing more for his father or mother. You nullify the word of God in favor of your tradition that you have handed on, and you do many such things. Verbum Domini. Today, the church and the Franciscan family in particular celebrates the feast of Saints Peter Baptist, Paul Miki, and their companions, who are also known as the 26 martyrs of Japan in 1597. And this group of Catholic martyrs includes priests, missionaries, and lay faithful from various countries of origin, including Spain, Mexico, Portugal, and Japan. And hence, a remarkable feature of this group of martyrs is that they represent the universality of the church, whose diversified unity extends beyond the borders of every, every, every nation. And their solid witness to the faith comes during a turbulent time in the history of Japan. It was only around 50 years prior to the martyrdom of these saints that St. Saint Francis Xavier had arrived in Japan with some other Jesuit fathers, bringing the message of the gospel. And his evangel evangelization efforts were very successful, as he won the admiration of the Japanese lords, especially since they thought that the spread of Catholicism would limit the power of the Buddhist monks. And through the efforts of St. Francis Xavier and his companions, nearly 1,000 Japanese people came to the faith and were baptized. And by the year 1580, which was only 30 years after the mission of Francis Xavier, there were 150,000 Catholic converts and 200 churches in Japan. And then in 1585, a new ruler named Toyotomi Hideyoshi came to power in Japan. And he was more sympathetic to the Buddhist monks who had been disturbed by the rapid growth of Christianity in their country. And unfortunately, the cause of Christianity was not helped when some overly zealous Christians burned down several Buddhist temples and replaced them with churches. And in 1587, Hideyoshi issued an order for Christians to leave Japan within 20 days. However, this ban was never enforced, and the Jesuits quietly continued with their missionary work. In 1592, Hideyoshi planned to invade and conquer the Philippines, which was a territory that had been held by the Spanish crown. And so King Philip II of Spain wished to negotiate peace with the Japanese ruler. And so he delegated Father Peter Baptist Blasquez, who had worked for several years in the Philippine Islands, to act as ambassador to Japan. St. Peter Baptist had come from a noble family. He was learned, renowned for his holiness, and he was fully capable of carrying out the role of ambassador. He arrived in Japan in June of, of, of 1593 with three Franciscan companions. And his negotiations with Hideyoshi were so successful that he even attained permission to spread Christianity throughout Japan without interference. And as a result, he founded several convents, churches, and hospitals, 
and he succeeded in bringing hundreds more of more people into the Catholic faith. And the ruler Hideyoshi also offered Peter Baptist a, a neglected temple in the, in the capital city and gave him permission to rebuild it as a church. Now naturally, the Buddhist monks who saw this were not happy with the favor that the Franciscans had enjoyed from the Japanese ruler. And it was only three years after the arrival of the Franciscans in Japan that an event occurred that triggered the martyrdom of these 26 Christians. And this event is known as the San Felipe incident of 1596, which involved the wreckage of a Spanish ship on the Japanese island of Shikoku. As the, as the ship and its goods were being confiscated, the pilot of the ship suggested to the Japanese authorities that it was customary for Spain to send missionaries ahead of time to infiltrate a country before they would eventually invade and conquer it. And when this was reported to Hideyoshi, the ruler of Japan, he ordered that the Christian missionaries be arrested and put to death as a warning to others. And so Japanese soldiers invaded convents and imprisoned 26 Christians. Among them were Peter Baptist and Paul Binky. On January 3rd, 1597, they were led to the public square in the city of Miyako, where they were condemned to death by crucifixion. And as a sign of their condemnation, a portion of the left ear of each prisoner was cut off. And the ex execution sentence would be carried out in the city of Nagasaki, which required a four-week journey, a grueling four-week journey to get there. And so throughout the expedition, the prisoners suffered from many things, including mistreatment from their captors, insults, abuse, hunger, cold, and all sorts of privations. And when they arrived in Nagasaki on Feb February 5th, crosses had already been prepared on a hill outside of the town, reminiscent of how our Lord had been crucified outside of Jerusalem. As each of the prisoners was bound to his cross, they did not cry out in fear or despair, but instead thanked God for the grace to be permitted to die like Christ the Lord, and they praised him. And the executioners pierced the bodies of the prisoners through with two spears each, and the last to be put to death was Peter Baptist. And the words of St. Paul Miki as he hung upon the cross are especially remarkable. He denies having any political connection to the Spanish ambassadors from the Philippines, and he is recorded as saying this. The sentence of judgment says these men came to Japan from the Philippines, but I did not come from any other country. I am a true Japanese. The only reason for my being killed is that I have taught the doctrine of Christ. I certainly did teach the doctrine of Christ. I thank God it is for this reason I die. I believe that I am telling only the truth before I die. I know you believe me, and I want to say to you all once again, ask Christ to help you to become happy. I obey Christ. After Christ's example, I forgive my persecutors. I do not hate them. I ask God to have pity on all, and I hope my blood will fall on my fellow men as a fruitful rain. So even as he has been unjustly condemned to die on a cross, you know, he's been associated with these ambassadors from the Philippines, Paul Miki speaks well about his persecutors, and he does not harbor any ill will towards them. He forgives them for what they are doing to him, and he even wishes that they too should come to salvation. He does not hurl curses at them or tell them that they are going to hell. Rather, he encourages them to turn to Christ, to find happiness. And this is certainly the, the mark of a true saint, the mark of a man of true courage, love, and heroic virtue. In obedience to our Lord, these hero heroic martyrs demonstrate their love for God by loving their enemies and praying for those who are persecuting them. 
And these martyrs are true witnesses to the love and mercy of Jesus Christ, who desires the salvation of every sinner, who decides to turn away from sin and to turn to the Lord in faith.